96.7 FM WORX. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. It is 9.05 a.m. here on Telegraph Hill and it's time once again for Cop Talk brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. The last Tuesday of each month we do this show. I'm AJ Brammer here in studio and I'm joined as always by Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston, the Marshal of the Town of Hanover, Chief Josh Taylor, and we're also joined this month by K-9 officer from the Madison Police Department, Captain Rick Munt. So, Captain, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you very much to, of course, the Chief and the Chief for joining us, as always. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us this morning, AJ. And uh, we are uh, anxiously awaiting the arrival of Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace, but we will get started on the show <laughs> as we wait for the Sheriff of uh, Chief Thurston, uh, what's new in your department? Uh, we're going through a hiring process right now. Uh, started um, well actually through the application process roughly a month ago, but um, we've had two steps of the process so far. We had the written test and physical agility test, which as always eliminates a few. Uh, and then we had a police panel interview. It was myself and four other police officers interviewed uh, the 11 remaining candidates. Uh, at the end of those interviews, we decided to uh, eliminate three. So we have eight uh, to refer to the merit board for their interview process uh, then we'll do some background checks and uh, some polygraphs and um, hopefully uh, come up with a strong candidate for our department and for the citizens of Madison and um, we think we have a good pool of candidates right now we have one opening uh, we have the possibility of a one or two more uh, very soon so uh, we're excited we're excited uh, after interviewing the candidates and getting to know them a little bit better um, who we have uh, potentially to hire and uh, we think they'll make great additions to our agency that's good and, you know definitely has to be exciting you know when you get those guys together to see who will potentially be joining your team sure and you know it's, it's like anything else when, when you get fresh uh, people fresh blood you get new ideas you get uh, new contributions uh, maybe to your department that you didn't uh, have before so um, it, it's good it's good to keep things fresh and, and we're excited and Chief Taylor, I know that you can certainly relate to the, the struggles of the hiring process. Yes, uh, with them, it's one of those you worry about, are we going to get enough people apply, are we going to get good quality candidates, or are we just going to get somebody that will fill the spot and then leave the agency to go somewhere else? I mean, it can be stressful, uh, especially with having several years under the belts, uh, Chief Thurston and I, that we've seen a lot of hiring and we can look at the individuals and think, this person's going to be a good one, but if we don't snatch them up now, this person's going to be picked up somewhere else or the incentives at a different agency or a different region of the state or even the country, they may be snatched away from you and you'd be like, man, this is rough. And the other thing uh, that I always point out, um, you know, hiring a police officer is a little bit different than being hired anywhere else because once we hire somebody, then a lot of times it's at least six months, but usually pushes a year before they're actually trained, have all the training they need, especially if they have to attend the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy, um, plus uh, our internal training program with our field training officer. So it's, it's at least six months and pushes a year before they're actually on their own, out on the road, and serving the community. So, um, you know, if you're going to invest that kind of time and that kind of resources in a new hiree, it has to be the right guy. Right. And like you said, it's, you know, you got to put in those resources. We want the best of the best out there protecting the city. Absolutely. The community. Yeah. Now, Captain Munt, you're you're fresh off the hiring process, correct? Uh, it, it appears that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been here since 1995. Excellent. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, we have a pretty good range of uh, experience here when uh, we do cop talk. So, like I said, happy to have Captain Munt on the show. We'll be talking a little bit more about him here in a bit. Uh, Chief Taylor, uh, what's new out in Hanover? Uh, Hanover's been fairly quiet, knocking on wood, as Chief Thurston uh, <laughs> reminded me. Every time you make a, uh, use the Q word, you have to uh, make sure you put a disc disclaimer out there. Uh, things have been going well. Our officers, we've been receiving some speed complaints in various areas, so our officers have been doing targeted enforcement, trying to slow down some of the speeders, and also in the morning we've been trying to educate some of the high school crowd because we're going into the summer months. Friday's uh, Southwestern's graduation, so they'll be out for a couple months before they come back uh, to school, so with that extra freedom, uh, there's going to be potentially more traffic or driving by the young drivers and we're hoping to let them know be cautious be aware of what's going on out there just 
don't have your head in the music and uh, driving like you own the road when there's everybody else out there. So just trying to do a little targeted traffic enforcement to help educate people and make it a safer drive everywhere here in Jefferson County. And certainly as we head into the summer months with nicer weather, we, you, like you said, everybody else is out on the roadway too. That includes motorcycles. As is said, look twice, save a life. I was going to say, with motorcycles out there safety-wise, it's amazing how many people just take their weekend ride down here to Madison uh, to see the area, and then they stop in uh, Hanover, Kent, everywhere on the county roads. Even they like to go up down 250 uh, out towards um, northwestern part of the county and everything to ride over there because of the curves in the hilly area. So it's definitely we need to pay attention and can be concerned about motorcycle riders. Anything that is that, Chief Thurston? Well, it, you know, uh, anytime you talk driving, the immediate uh, thought from law enforcement is safety, and uh, and that's the whole underlying message that Chief Taylor's talking about, and and what you're talking about with motorcycles, uh, and sometimes they are hard to see. Motorcycle motorcyclists are a little bit difficult to see. It's a little bit uh, more difficult to judge uh, gaining distance, what they're gaining on you if you're getting ready to pull out. So, uh, as you mentioned, definitely pay attention, look twice. And uh, um, because at the end of the day, uh, not all of us have investigated those accidents where it's been serious uh, or even fatalities. And um, that's one of our least favorite things to do. We, we don't want to be there as much as anybody else. So uh, be safe and, and get where you're going. And as we talk about safety, I know um, just uh, this past these past two weekends, you know, we had we had the old court days um, this past weekend, but kind of throwing it back to the weekend before the River Roots Festival. Uh, I know that uh, Chief, your Chief Thurston, your, your team is uh, well accustomed to festivals in this area. <laughs> we are, yeah. It seems like uh, you know once we get into April, it's it's uh, one every other weekend or so. And I know it's not quite that, but it, it seems like it. Uh, and yeah, our officers are are uh, well versed in that. Uh, we've we've um, been around those events for a long time, and it's gr they're great for our community. They bring a lot of people in from out of town to visit Madison, which um, is very important to our um, economic development and spending dollars here in Madison, uh, whether it's overnight stays or restaurants or, or what it can be. So we know the events are important. It does um, tax our department a little bit as far as uh, either working some overtime or people not allowed to take off on those certain weekends. But um, so far the river routes uh, uh, and speaking of knocking on wood, uh, so far the river routes in the past has not been that big of a deal for us. It's it's run very smoothly. Um, and I know this year weather kind of played a part in that. That uh, they had to kind of shut down a little early, but uh, no river routes uh, went very smoothly for us. And um, you know we're we're ready for festival season. Yeah. Less uh, the less stories of incidents at festivals that come to the radio station. <laughs> the better the festival must have gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. And, uh, you know, uh, years ago, regatta was such a problem, and now regatta is not uh, really a problem for us anymore. It's, uh, the regatta um, company itself has done a great job of making it a little more family friendly, and um, we, we just don't have the headaches there as much as we do either, um, or as, as we did in the past. So, um, I don't know. The festivals are, are great events for our community. And um, and actually, I think a lot of our law enforcement officers actually enjoy working them just because, I mean, you can ride around in a car and take calls and, you know, do your thing all year long. But this generally is an opportunity to get out of the car and walk a little bit and see some people. And a lot of times people come back to Madison that you haven't seen for a long time for a certain festival. So they get to visit with those people as well. So actually it's, it's good for our agency. And Chief Taylor, I know that uh, I've seen you out at festivals before helping out with patrols uh, so that, you know, ensuring that safe environment just as important. Yes, uh, it's all together because... Uh, as Chief Thurston said, sometimes it becomes very taxing on his staff that he may have to lean on Hanover or Jefferson County State Police or any other supporting agency to come out and give a hand uh, because being in an operational phase, you may see that the event's only going on for four hours, but there's a lead up and a takedown afterwards, so it could go from being a two-day event that you think, oh, okay, they're only open 12 hours, but really they have to staff it for 72 hours uh, of making sure the security, the setup, nobody's damaging any of the items, extra patrol, and 
when you have limited resources your people get worn out so uh, we have a good working relationship where if we're coming in for extra uh, security time for their events or they just ask us can you provide individuals to help us out to offset a little bit of it and, uh, and it's really nice because there's things that you get to see that you normally wouldn't when I worked for Vincent University they would have uh, headlining acts come in just sort of like Ricky Skaggs I remember him in the 80s listening to music uh, by him was able to see him during River Roots so that was nice and then also uh, how often do you get to say that you've met an individual or get just to talk to him instead of waiting in line to get an autograph signed and then just pushed on down there's been individuals where I've spent a whole day with some of the guys from Duck Dynasty on doing a security uh, detail for them so just spending eight hours with them you got a couple stories that you can go and share with your grandkids down the line mm -hmm. hey i knew these people i got to meet them i got to drive them around everything else it's a, certainly a like you said a unique experience and uh happy to see that you know you get to keep it a safe one that is madison police chief dan thurston and hanover town marshal josh taylor join us once again for cop talk brought to you by anderson sales and services we've kept him waiting anxiously in the corner of the room <laughs> we'll be checking <laughs> in after this break with uh K9 Captain Rick Munt after this message from Anderson Sales and Services on Cop Talk on Works 96.7. 96.7 FM WORX. Welcome back to Cop Talk brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services, a show we do the last Tuesday of each month. I'm AJ Brammer here in studio with Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston, Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor, and also joining us for this month's program, we have K9 Officer and Captain Rick Munt from the Madison Police Department. Uh, Chief Thurston, would you like to introduce our guest today? Sure. Uh, Captain Munt's been uh, a great asset to our department for the last 22 years he and I have kind of grew up through the department together we hired in roughly the same time I have a couple years on him but uh, not a whole lot but um, and he's been a canine officer for several years now and uh, I think it's important the public knows and understands what it takes to be a canine officer and all the work uh, that goes in uh, in addition to his eight hours of, of work a day so uh, with nothing further ado I'll, I'll let you and Captain Munt kind of take over. Yeah, like we said, Captain Munt, thank you so much for coming on the program. Uh, again, thank you. And uh, like, like, kind of like the chief was saying, you know, we we get to see the dividends of your work a lot, what you and what you and the canines do, but we don't get a chance to talk to you. Don't get to see you quite as much in the spotlight, so we're happy to have a chance to talk to you. Um, we kind of joked about it earlier. When did you first join the Madison Police Department? Uh, July of 1995. Excellent. So you a long tenure for sure. Yes. And how long have you been um, a canine officer with the department? Well, I started that in January of 2009. Excellent. So, and uh, kind of talk about the training that goes into, you know, getting, not only getting yourself ready, but also getting the dog ready for service. Yeah, initially, uh, each canine officer will go through a, what they call a basic canine class, and that ranges anywhere from five to six weeks. Uh, my first one was five weeks. Um, basically you're you're going away and you're pairing up with your dog and you're basically they're training you because your dog's pretty much already trained so what they want to do is just 24 7 uh, bonding with you and your dog that's uh, pretty much key so the you know your five weeks you're learning how to read your dog basically how to read his body language you know how he wags his tail how he holds his ears how he holds his head you kind of learn all that stuff so you can kind of understand what he's thinking so uh, after your initial training you come back and uh, in indiana there's no mandated minimum hours of training but the certifying agencies we go through uh, will have their recommendations and uh, this this last one that i went through uh, recommends 16 hours of training a month so we we are constantly training it seems so that, no, I mean that's a very interesting element of it. You know, you're never, you're never done with the training. But obviously, the work definitely pays off. You know, you you and the dog. What what is a typical day in the life with you and the dog? Uh, it just varies. Um, you know, we get up, we come to work. Uh, play time is important for a dog too, of course. You know, because they still are a dog. Um, we spend a lot of time down at the city of Madison dog park. Just let him have some free time, play time. Uh, we'll usually get together you know after that we'll go somewhere uh, kind of off on our, our by ourselves and do some training whether it be drug work or tracking training stuff like that so we keep a pretty busy day and obviously obedience is a, a big thing for police dogs so we spend at least an hour a day on obedience so. and that's you know I've seen from demonstrations in the past you know 
at dog it's it's pretty incredible you know going from playtime at the at the dog park but just the the snap in the dog's attention once it you know once it's time to go down to business yeah and they, and they understand you know when it's time to work they know when it's time to work when it's time to play they know that too so yeah it's pretty impressive it's definitely impressive now and just so we give credit where credit's due uh, what what is your dog's name his name is zemo he's just a little over one year old uh from the czech republic no, that, okay well that's he's an import yeah <laughs> yeah that most of them are most of them come from overseas uh you know we have to learn kind of a whole new language too so all of their commands are spoken in my case my uh, zemo's commands are in dutch well, that's it. and so you know that's something more for you to learn as well yeah yeah and as if there's not enough already right. but yeah <laughs> and as we talk about you know obviously you know it's it's you're constantly in a state of training with the dog but what are some of the other challenges you know being a canine officer working with the dog uh, you know I don't really look at it as challenges I've been a dog lover my entire life so when this opportunity came open in 2009 I jumped on it and uh, I've never looked back I absolutely love it um, it's a whole other world for me uh, it's not you know, I don't view it as police work. I view it as fun. So, um, just spending eight hours a day with the dog is great. Um, of course, you know you have your your challenges with with the health and and the messes they make and the hair and <laughs> you know. But uh, like I say, I just don't look at it that way. I, I enjoy it so much. And obviously, you know, you're making you know not only for just the Madison Police Department, but for this community as a whole. It's you guys. Your work goes a long way. Yes, yes. We actually get called out to surrounding counties on occasion too. Uh, just recently, I was sent over to Scott County, right on the Scott County and Jefferson County line, to assist them. So, uh, you know, they keep us busy, and and we enjoy that. And you know, Chief Thurston, coming back to you, you know, that's obviously, like we said, this is an important asset of your team. Oh, absolutely. And uh, we have two dogs with the Madison Police Department. Of course, Sheriff Wallace has three dogs over there. So um, that's kind of a unique asset for uh, a county our size, population our size, to have access to uh, five canines in the county. So chances are good that one of them is working at any given time. So if Chief Taylor needed something in Hanover, or as Captain Munt mentioned, even outside the county, uh, chances are we have one on duty somewhere in the county. But even if not, they are on call to come out and uh, one thing Captain Munt didn't um, mention but I, I think is important is in addition to uh, him b being a canine handler and it being a canine for the police department it's also his family's pet you know at home Captain Munt's children view that as as their dog you know their pet so uh, it's an important asset to his family in, in addition to the uh, what it brings to our community that's certainly definitely a good point yes and yeah, with that I mean uh, the dog goes home with him when he mentions the eight-hour shift with the dog and being with him that dog will never be able to grow up and be self-sufficient on its own so I mean uh, all the canine handlers in the community have taken on that extra responsibility uh, if it's their day off they still need to spend time with them so uh, Captain Munt was being modest about it uh, but there's a lot of extra hard work that comes with it and it definitely takes a special person to be a canine handler uh, young officers I know uh, Chief Thurston may go and run into this during his interview or process where they ask him where do you see yourself in five years everybody wants to be on SWAT ERT canine handler or a homicide detective uh, because those are what you see on TV and a lot of times uh, when those people say I want to be a canine handler that's the only reason why I'm getting in law enforcement when they actually get the experience of seeing what's going on they realize they might have bit off a lot more than they can <laughs> chew because they think it's a, a cool fun po uh, portion of the day but then the 24 7 mm -hmm. responsibility of uh, your partner your canine it's there so it takes really a special person uh, and my hat always goes off to the canine handlers in any community that uh, work with their uh, partner mm -hmm. because it's just not something that everybody can do 
Yeah, certainly, Captain Munt. We owe we owe you and we owe your dog quite a bit of thanks. Thank you. <laughs> that is. Captain Rick Munt joined us for Cop Talk. Also here is Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston and Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor. We'll be back to wrap things up with the Marshal, the Chief, and the Captain after this from Anderson's on Works 96.7. 96.7 FM WORX. Good morning. Thank you for tuning back in as we wrap up Cop Talk brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. AJ Brammer here in studio with Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston, Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor, and also joining us for the program. Captain Rick Munt, K-9 Officer for the Madison Police Department. Uh, as we wrap up the program, uh, Chief Taylor, anything else you'd like to add? Just enjoy the summer weather. If you guys are out on the river or ponds, boating, lakes, and everything, use personal flotation devices to help save a life. Uh, just enjoy the summer months. If you're able to get out, enjoy it. If you notice bad weather coming in, pay attention, use common sense, uh, stay safe out there. Certainly, and as we, you know, we had the weather weather event last weekend, or not this past weekend, but the weekend before that, so definitely want people to be safe. <laughs> Just expanding off staying safe, uh, and as you mentioned, severe weather, but also, um, you know, we're in a moving into that time of the year where uh, heat will be an issue. So, yes. um, you know, don't leave your pets in your vehicles. Keep an eye on pets that are that are outside. Um, be aware of your neighbors who, you know, maybe either elderly or or young children who. Um, possibly could have um, some side effects from the heat so um, you know uh, stay safe out there and if if we in law enforcement can be of any assistance uh, feel free to call and we'll do our best to, to help in any situation and as we talk about keeping uh, people and pets safe that's a good transition to uh, Captain Rick Munt uh, Captain th again thank you for coming on the program anything else you'd like to add before we go uh, well again thank you for having me uh, just wanted to tell all the kids in school you know high school and, and elementary you've almost got the year done so congratulations enjoy your summer for sure and of course as we wrap up the program we want to give a special shout out to our good friend and community icon sheriff john wallace <laughs> <laughs> we're sure he has a reasonable excuse and we'll be sure to see him next yeah. month on the program um, we'll find out next month i'm sure <laughs> yeah, for sure <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming on the program <laughs> thank you thank you have a great week captain rick munt for the mass police department madison police chief dan thurston and hanover town marshal josh taylor joining us once again for cop talk brought to you by anderson sales and services a big thanks to them for coming on the program and a big thanks for anderson's for sponsoring the program that will do it for may's edition of cop talk we will see you all again in the month of june until then keep it tuned here to works 96.7 wrx for the best of the 80s 90s and now i'm aj bramer thanks for tuning in